Hello and welcome to the Meet the Parents podcast with me, Diona Doherty, and my beautiful husband over here, Sean Haggerty. Before we get into this week's episode, we would like to give you uh, a hot minute and talk to you about our amazing sponsors. First up, we have NA Travel News, who, when they were supposed to drop a newspaper off to you at the Lyric. Yeah. Now, we don't know. It might have. It might not have arrived. It might be there, but anyway. But they searched for the wrong newspaper because when you yeah. you wrote to our stage manager or you text on your phone and you says, can you go to reception, please, and ask for N-I- no travel oh, news I. newspaper. I meant to write obviously NI travel news and I wrote NO, no travel news. And our stage manager went down to the box office of the Lyric Theatre and says, do you since have the no travel newspaper? <laughs> So yeah, so. she came back and she like, it's not there. And I was like, the NI travel newspaper. And she was like, oh, I asked for no travel news. And I checked my message and she goes, I'll go back and ask. And I was like, I think they get it. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not going to have a look and go, there's only NI travel <laughs> news newspaper here. It's like, come yes. on now. Yeah, so NI travel news, thank you very much to our long-term sponsor. They are great. They are sending me on a one-man holiday in about two hours from now. Yeah, he's, he's leaving after this episode. I'm going to do a show in the Lyric and Sean is going to Malta courtesy of NI Travel News, to promote the new flight route from Belfast to Malta and explore the beautiful country that is Malta. Is Maltesers from there? Yeah. Bring some back, please. Um, NI Uh Travel News, you can pick the new edition up in your ground espresso coffee shops, in your travel agents. It's available as of now, airports. And there's also a local tourist section in the papers for your for people who like to holiday at home yeah which is most people now i feel like like ireland is such a class place to explore like we keep talking about like someday hopefully getting like a camper van or an rv and like travel in ireland to see ireland because yeah because when we were going to buy one we were like we're really sort of self-conscious and weird about like oh we're gonna have to drive on the wrong side of the road and we're gonna have to get used to all these if we go away and i was like why not just stay in ireland as like john dublin drives on the same side of road as us (laughs) So uh, in NI Travel News in the in the printed edition and online, there's a local tourist section where you can um, just there's lots of tips and lots of information about all the gorgeous places there are to visit here. If yeah. you visit the Giants Causeway and happen to avail of the um, headphones to go on a guided tour, it's these dulcet tones taking you around them rocks. It is I. Actually, it's only me doing the kids one. I'm doing the one that they put on oh, kids because yeah. they probably went, she won't know how to say <laughs> the big words that the rocks are. Yeah. So whatever the words are. It's <laughs> the, the, whatever the name are for like the, those fancy names for rocks. Science stuff. Yeah. And then the kids want me going, geez, that's a wild big stone there. Watch the stone. <laughs> so if you're ever at the Giants Causeway and you're going for a walk and you just see children just banging their heads off the rocks. It's they're listening to they're me. They're listening to Diona's voice. You're welcome, parents. Our, uh, one thing I oh. loved as well, before we get into the next sponsor, one thing I loved about the NI Travel News website is when you scroll right down to the bottom of it, not only can you insert your details and there's a weekly mailing list, mm. but what you can also do is click a thing that shows older versions of the newspaper. So if you like, we could go on right now and have the latest months. Aye. So if you're, say you're going on like a winter's holiday, but obviously the summer ones are coming out now, you can go back into you. the the ones the previous mm. and go through the old archives so um you're welcome oh, the internet. The you can do great, almost anything almost we are proudly sponsored uh by little wing pizzeria as well we are massive pizza lovers it yeah. is our favorite food it's the one yeah. thing that unites us if it wasn't for pizza we would not still be together we'd have gotten divorced by now we will have an argument and we'll just have a pizza and get over yeah. it yeah we we eat our pizza the same way, don't we? Like there are different people eat their pizzas. Like so, so, there was a school near me in in Derry, and it was uh, it was called Lemon Christie, and it was like everyone thought it was like the posh school, and we used to we used to like slag them off, being like, oh, they all eat their pizzas with knives and forks. That's what we used to say yeah. about them. They eat their burgers with knives and forks, and they all eat their pizzas with knives and forks because we think they were dead posh. <laughs> but, but so how do you eat your pizza? Just like I think it's called like the the pie. Way of just like I lift the slice and I just eat it like that. Do you eat it like through the palm of your hand? Like, I but I eat like the corner first, like the corner of the triangle. Ah, uh, no, then we definitely don't. What are you doing? Fold. Shut up. No, nope. I've never seen you fold a pizza in your life. Do you know why? Because all our pizzas are quite small. See if we get a big giant one. Like, remember we were in New York for our honeymoon and it was like the big, big slice. And slices. you buy a big slice now, they're about $30 a slice, mm. bastards. But 
when you get it and you like fold it up and then it just goes straight in. Because when if you don't fold it, then it just flaps at the front. I know if it's massive. I yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you can eat your pizza anyway you like in in anyway. little wing. They they won't give you pineapple though. And yeah. I don't know if you can smuggle pineapple in. I don't know if I'm allowed don't to encourage bother. that. Don't be People a wee like virgin. It, just no, they don't. They don't. We do meat feast. Do you know what to put on your pizza, Haribo? Why? Just makes it a wee bit chewy. You have never had Haribo in your pizza. Diona. What? You're right. <laughs> never. There's 10 Little Wing venues around the north. And there's also a Little Wing Little Lunch, which is a daily offer for £7.15. You get a six inch pizza and a choice of a salad. Did you say seven fifty? Seven pounds fifty. That's great value. Yeah. We're definitely going there soon. When I come back, when I come back from Malta. Let's you're, just, you're just like Mr. Treat Yourself these days, aren't you? It's the only way to be. Um... So yeah, Little Wing Pizza, thank you so much for sponsoring us. And we also need to tell you about Sunnyside Up, currently running in the Lyric Theatre. I'm knee deep in the, I'm actually leaving straight after this to go do a matinee. And I think by the time this episode goes out, there'll be tonight's show, which is Thursday night. There'll be a Friday night show and two on the Saturday. So there's like three days left from right now. If you're watching it the day this comes out, we stop on the 20th of April. We stop, we finished it on the 20th of April. It's been going brilliant. Uh, you've been getting a stand ovation every single show. Which has been class. I didn't expect Brilliant. that. Obviously, you don't yeah. like you're, you don't like. Do you know what I mean? But it's, so now it's getting to the point each show where I'm going. Well, if you, they don't stand up at the end, yeah. <laughs> there was a matinee there yesterday, and I was like, I wonder will the matinee energy be different? Do you know, like will people not stand up because it's like daytime? Do you? Mm. I don't know. But once you're in the theater, you lose any sight if it's day or night because obviously it's completely in blackout. But Sunny Set Up is a dark comedy that I had written about. Each, it, on a, with an educated experience of having done IVF to have our kids it's uh, very funny can be very sad at times I'm really enjoying doing it um, yeah it, if, it's there's a, tickets left at the Lyric Theatre if you want to go it's a full roller coaster because you literally like laugh one minute and before you're finished laughing you've like a lump in your throat and you start crying mm. it's mm -hmm. Out of embarrassment, I, I, you doing it? There's Joke. no, <laughs> there's bits that I I really love that I think people are anticipating a a, 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 a really heartwarming moment or something, and then I'll say a joke and they'll laugh and people will yeah, go, yeah. oh, I didn't, oh, <laughs> and like they're confused and I love seeing that in the audience if they're going, oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know how to feel anymore. So it's because really... I was near doing that as well because me and Stephen were watching it the other night, my brother. And Liverpool were playing and I was like, the one night we, we're coming to see this is like a big, big Liverpool match. And I'm right. glad we obviously went to the show because <laughs> A, supporting my amazing wife and B, Liverpool got hammered. So I'm glad I didn't waste two hours yeah. watching that. But Liverpool, it was like, we were we stuck it on his phone for like 10 or 15 minutes during the break. Oh, not, right. And then turned it off and then it started and then you went back into the second half and there was a bit and it was like really, really sad and like everyone was, was crying or about to cry. And I was about to lean over to Stephen and go, one nil Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> so just like a wee, wee icebreaker. <laughs> but uh, here, let me read some of the audience feedback because it has been nothing short of amazing, right? The finest balance of humor and sensitivity. That's from one person. Funny, sad, clever, heartfelt. Every emotion under the sun was stirred up. Beautiful, honest, heartwarming, hilarious story. R.I.P. O.J. Simpson. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Yeah. You, if you're missing on set up, we do have another show coming up in August and September. It's called Sex in the City Hall. It'll be one of them big Girls Night Out comedy shows. Um, it's on in the Grand Opera House and all the local theatres. And we are dead excited to do that too. It's going to be like a, a big old bash. We've got a class cast that we'll announce soon. Yeah, we're so. making a trailer for it at City Hall in the next few weeks as well. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a big proper trailer made. It's it's going to look like a movie, but it's going to be on stage and it's going to be... Class. That's how plays work. They're That's like movies, but on stage. Wow, we. Put that in your what a, what a tone. <laughs> like a, it's like a movie. That's how we'll do all the PR for the show. It's like, imagine a movie, but it's in front of you. Live. Yeah. I saw, no cuts. what do you call your man from Crashing? Pete Holmes. The comedian Pete Holmes. I seen him, I saw a clip he put up a few days ago and I, I thought it was brilliant. And he's talking about um, explaining if you were, like, what sleep is to aliens. And he's like, well, basically, like, and he's talking about like, no matter how much energy he intakes, you just have to like shut it all down for like eight hours. And then the aliens are like, but do you not get bored? And he's like, no, 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 my brain plays movies that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is a perfect way to explain sleep because you do just like your brain just plays movies that you are in. Didn't you fall out with me like two weeks ago because I cheated on you in a dream? I've done that several times. You have. And do you know how I defended you? No, actually, one time you told me that you cheated on me in your dream. 
And this was this yeah. was a few years ago in our old house. I remember you saying, I cheated on you in my dream last night. And I was fuming. And you were like, hardly, it's not real life. And I was like, well, as Walt Disney said, a dream is a wish your heart makes. So. To book your ideas up. Buck my ideas up. <laughs> yeah. Like I was fuming. I know, I know. But but you, you said as well, like one day you woke up and you said, my eyelids are so sore. I dreamt all night. Yeah. Have you ever heard anything like that? Just so you know. That's why. Isn't it mental? But that's what that's what rapid eye movement. It's you're, perfect. It's like I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Let's be going mad because you, How do you know because you've been doing rapid eye movement. Did you ever no. did you ever listen in science? No. <laughs> <laughs> Script to see. There you go. Yeah. But people are mad and like looking into what your dreams mean. Do you know Nonsense. what I mean? Nonsense. I don't know, Sean. I think your brain picks all the parts. I know at random and pit, you just replay those in your mind. But like, obviously, they're replaying those specific bits for something. Like if you have a reoccurring dream, that's for a reason. I just have a constant reoccurring dream that my teeth were ripping through my... I would try and talk and they, they would just mm. rip through my cheeks. And apparently it was meant to do... It, was like it means something, doesn't it? about something. Mm. I don't know what it was because I'm mad about myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it, I, you, you have reoccurring dreams. Mm. We've only recently started talking to Winter, who just turned three, about dreams. Like, you know, you'd be like, right, go have a dream. Like, what dream are you going to have tonight? And then in the morning, she'll tell you about her dreams and stuff. But she's making them up. Yeah, because I would say to her when she's going to, to sleep now, just as a wee kind of way of winding her down and be like, right, we're, we're going to sleep now. And I'd say, right, give me something that I'm going to dream about tonight and then I'll give you something that you're going to dream about. Doesn't, and then I would just again. make up a few <laughs> things and I go, right, go you and now and dream about those and I'll go and dream about the things you said. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. Do you know, um, the other day I was in her room with her and she'd brought up all of her dolls up to her room and sat them on her bed and she goes to me, Mummy, all my dolls are on my bed now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you this? And I was like, what did you say? And she went, my dolls are on my bed now, bitch. And she repeated it three times. And Don't I said, what's that? the last word you said? And she went, bitch. And I was like, what does that mean? She was all, I don't know. And I was like, whoa, she has heard someone go, let's yeah. go, bitch. Or something like that. And she was repeatedly saying it. I wonder, is it on YouTube or something? I have no idea. But she, the only YouTube she can access mm -hmm. is... There's a mic drop after it. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'd also have a microphone in her room. I know. And yeah. a mic stand and a stage. Our three-year-old has a stage and a microphone and a, and a mic stand in her room. That's where I practice my gigs. Yeah, just to her. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she started saying fuck's sake as well. Fuck's sake, Doesn't aye. she? And I, I, don't I was going to say you wonder where she gets it from, but she gets it from us because we swear all the time. And it's just, who cares? It's just noise. I know, I know, I know. This is the thing, is when you're parenting, you're supposed to commit. But there's a lot of the times I don't know how I feel about things to commit. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how I feel about her saying bitch and fuck's sake. It'd be different if she was going, you're a bitch, fuck's sake. But if she's just going, I got my dolls, you bitch. Then I'm going, I don't know if I mind that. I know, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's my, my older sons too. They all like sort of swear now, almost like subtly and throw them into sentences. And I'm like, uh, I, I don't care you should be correcting them or you feel like you should be but it's just but I'm not offended by anything. swearing I know I know do you know of what course. I mean we swear all the time exactly so it's not for me it's just syllables it's just pneumonics pneumatic no I'm talking I'm like a man at 24 now talking about the schematics <laughs> what is it N uh, it's just uh, sounds pneumonics <laughs> it's something like that um, it's just sounds. Yeah. So like it doesn't bother me. It's the intention. So if you're, I don't care really that much. But then I'm going, oh, but should I? Because I don't want like nursery ringing home and being like, well, she's just come up here and sat her dolls down and went, right, eat up now, bitch or whatever. I don't want, I don't want people being annoyed that she's mm. cursing in front of them. But then, what do you do? Do you know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean. Like, so how are you supposed to? That's the thing as well. It's like witnessing somebody getting hit by a car and going. Did you have to show me you getting hit by a car? It's like it's it was there. It happened. Oh, but it's good. Yeah, it's hit, getting hit by a car isn't going to rub off on someone. It might. Where's it might looked fun. <laughs> I'm going to throw myself out here. Her I arm went claim. the whole way around <laughs> the other side of her head. <laughs> you try that. Um. So, but then it's wondering how to parent that. It's wondering, do you go right? Don't be doing that. Like, do you address it? Because apparently, if a child's not cursing, if you're, you're not, supposed to say nothing. If you're not passionate about it. No, but I mean, addressing it and telling them off is apparently making them want to do it more. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you're eating your dinner and the child is being really fussy mm -hmm. 
you're supposed to just not address it. You're supposed to just completely leave it. If they're like, I don't want to eat this or I'm, I'm not eating this or whatever, yeah. you're just supposed to just ignore it and just continue eating your dinner. And because we be sitting with, it's it's only like all these things are really just winter at the moment because Rocky's only 10 months. But like she is fussy with what foods that she eats. And like we try. We've started the episode, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I was just wondering because we did the. I thought we were going to do the the talks at the oh, start. Oh, I welcome to meet the parents. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the longest ad I've ever had to edit, man. <laughs> we just went on and yeah. By the way, this is meet the parents of River Grant. Yeah, Grant. that's it. Um, I because well, I thought you made a re recording. I was like, I hope so. We did all the ads. Yeah. <laughs> because with winter, like she'll sit and like she has fussy now. You like and you whenever whenever you're weaning your child, you be like blending asparagus and fucking chia seeds with oat milk and all this stuff and then you'd be like giving them all these like really amazing things and then by the time they're one they're eating a happy meal three days a week and you're like oh, i don't care i know i know whereas i know an actor friend of mine who's vegan his kids eat like like pita and hummus and couscous and beetroot and all the things that like it's a, I think it's just about exposure because like, we don't eat that stuff hmm. beetroot's the worst of them all. It, it can go die. It's like chewing vinegar. Beetroot is the pedophile of the vegetable world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It should be kept in a cupboard. <laughs> yeah. What you could maybe do is like freeze beetroot. Show the circular things. And then, and then throw them the, at the peelers. Use, use them as ice cubes. <laughs> oh, no. Because then you'd taste them. Hmm? They'd melt in you. No. But with... um. I like if, if winter's sitting eating her dinner. And we've always made a wild conscious effort to like try and... Because like... It is so, so easy to give children eating disorders when they become adults. Mm -hmm. And it usually, like a lot of the time, has come from the influence within their house. Yeah, which is... And years ago, there was no kind of tabooness around everything. You know, people would say the word fat and people would just, yeah. you know, like it, it just nothing yeah. really mattered. Whereas now... Because of the change in society and for all the right reasons, obviously. Well, the education of it all, yeah. It's only now when you can look back in hindsight and just be like, Jesus, that was like mm -hmm. horrifying. But then your parents or the people that you were around at the time when you were developing all these feelings or whatever around yeah. food. Um, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that you can do that's really unhealthy. Like if you, if you say to your child, like, right, you have to finish your dinner. Yeah. But then you don't know how hungry they are like you can't mm. go well this is the exact amount of food that they need to eat you don't know that like yeah. you could sit and eat your dinner and you go oh i'm full like we, you and i finish our dinner and i was taught growing up to clear my clear plate. your plate yeah. I, think, I think i was too and i finish all my food and i'm usually past the point of full and because i'm just taught oh just finish all your dinner but, that's, like, but as soon as you start feeling full, you should just go to myself. I need to give this to Sean. <laughs> that's what you need to do every the, meal. Yeah, you are the, <laughs> the dog. Yeah, the dusty bin. The dusty bin. But with a kid, if you're going to the mall, finish your dinner, finish your dinner, then they're like, but I'm not. I'm, children stop when they're full. Yeah. But we keep telling them to eat more. Yeah. And we congratulate them when they're finished yeah. eating, which is mental. It's something that we realized recently and we stopped doing because yeah. we were like, why... Why are we praising our children for for eating all this yeah. plate of food that we've put in front of them? I follow a child food psychologist online and that's a very specific job to have. Hmm. But she is a child food psychologist because I am very interested in like not giving my children eating disorders because most people have disordered eating. Oh, I would say all of our generation, our generation all would of us all have something. Yeah. Have negative like... Um, attachments to food yeah. and emotional attachments to food and this girl has said that you should from the beginning just food is food you, there should never be anything that's out of bounds and there shouldn't be things that are placed in a hierarchy mm. it shouldn't be like here's your broccoli and here's your potatoes and here's your meat and there's your sweets it shouldn't be like that because then they'll go well I want that one more because that's the forbidden thing you know what I mean mm. and then they'll be like oh the thing I have to eat and then that's their attitudes towards it forever yeah. and then people be like oh finish your potatoes and your vegetables whatever and then you'll get a sweet or you'll get ice cream it's like des the idea of dessert mm. is a reward a sweet a reward yeah. which shouldn't be that and then I remember reading about a study that was like children they did it and children who were in like like young kids who were in an orphanage I don't know where it was years ago 
where they kept them in two separate sections and one of them had structured eating. So they were like given the exact same foods all the time. Like, you know, everyone was fed the, the same foods and they had like set, set meals. And the other side of the orphanage, they would just put out buffet style food every single meal and let kids eat whatever they want, including bad stuff, including the what even that, even that bad stuff, mm. all the sort of sweet stuff and all the sort of things that we consider treats as well as all the things that we consider nutritious. And all of the children equally in the orphanage all had the exact same level of health. So the kids who were allowed to choose what they wanted and might have chosen the sweeter stuff more had absolutely, there was no detrimental effect. So all the effort that was put in on the other side of making sure they eat their broccoli and making sure they eat their fruit and making sure they have enough fiber and enough protein was a fucking waste. Because <laughs> nobody nobody Unbelievable. was in any bad shape on the other side. Mm. It just shows you like, you know, you don't, th- that sort of inf- enforcing all that sometimes, it's just like you should have a healthy attitude towards eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full up and eat whatever it is that you fancy. Yeah, everything's fine in moderation. Exactly. I think if you teach the word moderation to your kids, and I think as well, it's almost like that rebellious thing where if you're told this is a bad thing, don't touch this, don't go near this, when kids are older, they're just going to move out of the house and be like, I I can now do this thing. I know. In my house, I grew up, my mum's type 1 diabetic, so we, we couldn't have, we didn't have sweets or sugary stuff in our house because she's type 1 diabetic, but also has zero willpower. So mm-hmm. my, at Christmas time, my daddy would bring out the, like the celebrations, or like, they like a massive ton of quality street because they were massive back then. Mm-hmm. Everyone would have one or two on a Sunday or whatever, and he'd put them away again, and we only had sweets on a Saturday night. You know, usually we would have a tip top, a thing of opal fruits and a thing of skips and watch the big big movie at 5.55 and you knew I was going to say that because I say it all the time <laughs> it's like one of my memories from childhood we were hair drying by the fire after a bath and all and channel 5 channel 5 at 5.55 the big big movie hmm. all the 80s people will know about that 90s and then 11.55 was the big big boner <laughs> channel 5 used to be dirt oh, didn't it? late at night there was a dirty movie on mm-hmm. was it I don't that? know if it was a dirty movie but there was like just, there was always a bit of bucket just, in it there was filth on like yeah that's so funny did you all sit up like three brothers you should probably uh, did you no. all sit up at night to watch it no be weird if you all sat up together yeah we're boners <laughs> brother boners <laughs> no thanks yeah. yeah brother boners <laughs> yeah so how we are feelings about food growing up were they all negative well not so i remember as a child eating like do you know you see kids like crying eating their dinner when they're like mm. five and six? That was me. And I used to throw all my food behind the washing machine in the kitchen. And I remember specifically out in front of our house when I was growing up, there was a big massive like green, like you go out and play football and stuff. And I was out the front and I, we were getting a new washing machine that day. And I remember being going, yeah, you got to stay out of the house because you are <laughs> in big trouble. Because I knew there was like weeks of mashed potato and fish fingers behind my, and it was starting to smell. And I and I think they might have actually got a new washing machine because of the smell, but it was my food <laughs> behind it. And I remember being out the front going, Jesus, just don't be going. I could see the van arriving all and the boys bringing it in. And I was like, I, and I heard my dad shout Fiona. Fiona from the house and I was like do you know as a child too when you're in trouble you literally get the shits you're like yeah, my yeah. Ho- I am dead yeah. I know what you think is going to happen my dad never laughed at a finger to me like but I remember being, going like oh, I am so dead like what's going to happen <laughs> I'm going to go to bed early you know what I mean yeah. and they brought me in and they were like what is this and I was like I just don't like potatoes and fish fingers <laughs> and everything was behind and vegetables everything was behind there And then as I got older then, I specifically remember finding a Weight Watchers book in my house when I was 11. And that was it. And do you know what it was? I was obsessed with the numbers. I was really good at maths. My daddy used to always get me to do maths sums all the time. I was really good at maths. And when I found this Weight Watchers book, because it was all about points. Mm. So I became obsessed at about 11 years old with Weight Watchers points. Because I was like, this is like a game. Mm. The numbers were like it was it was a, a really shit boring game. Like but. I had no friends and I used to <laughs> <laughs> it was just me in the washing machine. <laughs> one and, for me, one yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> one for mommies. <laughs> that was it. And I became obsessed with the numbers and that's how you remember just like all the numbers were always things. So then throughout my, my teens I definitely had I think disordered eating. Like I am sure every woman in her thirties had 
every woman now in her 30s would have had because all you'd see in the media when I had growing up was heroin, heroin chic. Kate Moss mm. was like the big thing. All the supermodels were emaciated. It was like a big, all, this, all the magazines in the 90s were like, Kerry Katona loses three stone again. And the next week it was like, Kerry Katona. Fitness Katuna, videos, fitness DVDs. Davina McCall, Jerry yeah. Halliwell's doing her yoga. Victoria Beckham looks like a lollipop. It's all we seen. Yeah. And it was all that we were sh- like aspiring to. And so it was like, it was like, I think uh, if you grew up in the 90s, you have a really messed up uh, relationship with food. Do you remember the celebrity magazines too? And it used to show you on the cover, like a celebrity who'd put on like five stone and they were at the beach and they put in the water Aye. with their kids. Aye. And they were just like, like fat shaming them on the covers of all these magazines. And it literally would go, look who's fat again. Aye. And it was like, it's, they were then it became, there was celebrities who used to be in like bands, like someone like say for, for and I'm using Carrie Gatona again. But then her, her career became... Her body. Put on my lose, 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 lose me, put on my lose me because it kept her in the mag she would get liposuction, then she put on I kept her in the magazines and that's what kept her earning money and then she could release fitness videos. And it was like it was sad that there was such a appetite, for want of a better word, mm. in the world for watching women lose and put on weight and lose and put on weight like it was a game. We were all obsessed with it. Everybody was. Apparently all these like before and after pictures you see of bodybuilders and people like especially like men I'm talking about here where they have like six packs and things like that and big muscles. Apparently what they do is they get paid big money by brands. Like they go into gyms and point people Mm. out and just go, right, let's get him, him, him and him. And they pay them to put on weight and stop working out. uh, Because it's easier to do that. Because it's easier for them to get back into shape. Because mm-hmm. they're fitness fanatics or they're, you know, that's their life. It's their lifestyle. So they're like here for three months. Don't go to the gym. Eat shite. We'll pay you 20 grand and then just get back in the gym, put the weight back on and we'll just do before and after. And like all that stuff is more regulated now. But for about, for a couple of decades there, it was just like people could just Should lie. Say. They yeah, could yeah. just, they could just say. And also like, you know, whenever you like um, promote products now, obviously you have to have like an hashtag ad or paid mm. partnership and stuff online. Whereas in the 90s, it would, you would just have people being like, oh, wow, I love Cracker bread so much, and then it's like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It, like, it's just fucking cracker bread and all the and photographs. Pills too. Pill, Diet weight pills. Loss pills. Slim fast. I heard slim fast was something that once you put it inside you, like, you know, whatever was in it, mm. it turned into a worm, and the worm at your whole stomach. I don't think that's true. Do you not? No, but I. D- I think it's just I think it's just milkshakes branded as some sort of there was ones called Adios. Do you remember those? And you had to get them from a pharmacy and everyone was going mad for them whenever I was a teenager. And they used to make you shit oil. No they way. would drain the fat from all of the foods that you would eat and you would shit orange oil. And you had to get you had to have a BMI over a certain amount to get it. But my friend used to be able to get it from her friend who had a high BMI who used to go into the chemist and buy loads of them and dish them out to everyone, sell them for double the price. There was um like I've taken I took loads of stuff when I was a teenager. I took horse ones. What about the so big my K? They were for horses. Ketamine. It wasn't ketamine, no, but it was something for like it was like something for a horse, and your heart would be going ninety miles an hour, no and you'd go to the gym because here just eating apples sweating. all day and running around a field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was nice. wild, and it was like you would. I I, I had all my friends on that, and it's mad because that makes me really sad to think of my so child sad. ever ever felt like that, and only, and this is mad, but only after having kids have I fully went. I am. I've accepted my body. It took me mm-hmm. to my 30s. It took me to having children. It took me to be probably heavier than I've ever been my entire life. But because I because I have so much respect for my body now, because mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you've carried two children. You the amount of work I get done in a day, like I'm fit and I'm healthy. And because also my idea of what's important in your body has changed because you see people who literally like can't walk properly or you know have actual problems and you start to go you start your I starting to go now in my mid-30s going geez I hope I don't ever like end up even with like arthritis or something that's going to be debilitating I'm not going what size is my jeans yeah just feels so silly in comparison yeah. doesn't it it's nonsense even people when they wear themselves I'm like for what reason? what does that mean for what reason what, yeah what is the ideal weight because yeah. for me it's just about feeling good in your own body mm. and feeling healthy and that's it. That's all it should matter. Because apparently the like the whole calories thing 
doesn't it's like if, if you it's different for every single person surely it is i and it's like i like two thousand calories that's way too round of a number also ten thousand steps a day what they say you're supposed to do mm. that's too round of a number how'd that happen yeah. do you apparently what that was was apparently i'm gonna really really make shit up now from one sentence i've read somewhere mm-hmm. one time but i think it was about like the first uh smart watches that were made that were like fitbits that were supposed to count your steps were made in china and they could only program them up to ten thousand. they wouldn't go higher than that so they made this whole marketing plan where like once you hit the ten thousand, you don't need to do anymore because their watches couldn't go higher than that so it was like that's the marketing then that's all you need to do and then Mm. that became the number that everyone aspired to it's too round of a number yeah yeah of course how is it ten thousand steps is like 10k isn't it pretty much it's no it's not is it not no i think it's like seven or something or less than that i know i think it's like thirteen thousand. it depends how long your legs are Hmm. If you're a toddler, ten thousand steps. Our to- our toddler would do ten thousand steps around the living room in yeah, yeah. the first half of the morning. Yeah, just dancing. We <laughs> yeah, we'd be like just running circles. It's rec no rec what time. We when we were kids, <laughs> <laughs> she gets a piece of bread and butter for a breakfast. Here, she actually does have that she today. Did. Yeah, she, she does. Fucking McGabry breakfast. I give her breakfast, and you were like, "That's like a McGabry breakfast." Yeah, but that's the thing. Apparently, it's different for girls than it is for boys, and that is true because, um, like there has been studies done that show that. Uh, girls but by the time they're three are aware not all of them obviously but m- many of them are aware of their body shape in a negative way they start to like pinch their belly and they look in the mirror they start to be aware whereas boys are it's much much later i don't know what the age is but i know it's a few years after that and that is because if you look at all of the stuff that's targeted towards little girls it's all about appearance it's like changing their hair color and their face and their makeup and their nails and their dresses and the princesses and all the princesses and the barbies are skinny and it's all these things whereas that's not what's targeted at boys it's targeted at mm-hmm. boys is like trucks and fucking play sand and Wrestling balls and, and fighting it's and aye <coughs> nothing yeah, is about aesthetic lifestyle so they're 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 given a different message. Their mm-hmm. value isn't on what they look like. Their value is on what they what they can you know contribute. Yeah, and they even like whenever they do make like a plus size Disney character or something, yeah. it's, it's the talk of the town. It's Big the, deal about it. It's yeah. every new station lad bibles posting about it, and you're like, this still isn't normal. No, it? you know, it's, yeah. you're you're still making it's a bigger deal. Then, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you go into even like shops like I seen in Primark recently. It was like they have models that like mannequins that they're like oh it's like you know a filler figured mannequin and there's they're still like a size 10 and it's like either filler because your last ones were a size 6 you know mm. what I mean it's like most Skeleton. the average woman is a size 14 do I read recently do your girl from the Wizard of Oz Dorothy was Julie Andrews no 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 Ju- Judy Garland Judy Garland this was what the 40s 50s it was made oh I apparently they made her drink loads of coffee and smoke 80 cigarettes a day to stay thin to stay thin I wouldn't be surprised she was what 14 she was really young uh, she was a teenager 14, 14. I know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised because mm. it was like I'm pretty sure they didn't make the tan man do that no he'd be squeaking there was <laughs> a load of stuff for yeah. that as well there was like the the tin man was uh, he they had to replace the actor because he was covered in lead paint so and he ended up having lead poisoning. So that the, the actor that Jesus. was in the movie was completely different than the one that they shot like the whole first half of the movie with. And then the like there's a scene where like there's all snow falling and it was pure asbestos. Oh <laughs> <That's> shit! <laughs> so there's a whole. That's what I mean. Like is it as times it? it's changed? It's because we've like, obviously you're more educated, but it's mm. something the shit that people used to do. Do you remember dads used to stand in hospitals, just the like, baby becoming out, yeah, and they'd be like, yeah. "Go, I love one more push. Mm. We're we're nearly here." Like just smoking and their dudes your mum said last night they smoked on planes and stuff Hi. like years ago people were just smoking around them in planes and everyone else just and like smoking in cars we were kids yeah, on them and yeah. stuff and it was just like it's just completely normal Unreal. and so now that you think back and go that's mad mm. but I wonder what is the shit that we do now that people will look back and go know. that's crazy they used to Surely do that there's nothing left there's not, there has to be Sean do? think of one thing so well, I think they'll look back now and go, oh my God, I can't believe there was people who were transphobic or people who were, you know, because mm. I think they'll be like, but that's, you know, because obviously as time moves on, there will be more and more people who feel comfortable to be their real selves. Yeah. So we will see much more of a mix of different types of people in the world. And people look back and go, fuck, I can't believe people were homophobic and transphobic mm. and racist. There will be a time, hopefully, when all that exists. But like, will people look back and be like, 
you know, like I don't, I don't know. They used to sit and make podcasts like weirdos and think anyone <laughs> gave a fucking shit what they had to say. I, <laughs> I remember going to Portadown Pool one Saturday night. We used to like go. Wow, there's a sentence. <laughs> we used to go almost like every Saturday night, but my dad would just round up all the kids in the street. Mm. And we would go in what must have been like a Ford Escort or something at the time. And we used to be three deep. You, if, if you were sitting on a chair, you'd guaranteed you'd have two people sitting on your knee. In the car? In one car. There used there was 13, 14 of us there was, in there was one car. Safety. And one time the police stopped my dad. And my dad was like, I'm taking kids from an underprivileged uh, street uh, to this swimming pool. And they were like, going And they were like, oh, okay, going ahead. Well, no all problem. the kids in the back? Everyone. The, the car was packed. It was Beverly Hill Willies. Like, it's mad that shit used to get with. Yeah. But also, remember I read a fact the other day I was saying to you, but it was like 19... A study was done in like the 1940s... 1982! That said the 43% of dads hadn't changed a nappy in the early 80s. Like, you are born in 83. So mm. at that stage, almost half of the dads in the household had never had never changed a nappy. You'd well believe it. But I don't think our dads would have changed nappies. No. no. I don't think my dad still wouldn't change a nappy. No, Would yours? I don't think so. I don't yeah. think it's for lack of wanting to. I think it's just they just be like too too like worried about breaking their arse. <laughs> Do you know what like? Pauline, come down here. The wee lad's <laughs> hose broke. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I think they would just be like, I don't know what I don't want to hurt them, or, yeah. you know. <laughs> but that's how yeah. time changed, right? Because like the 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 like millennial fathers now are all doing all the same shit as the mas. Whereas back then it would have been like, mm. wonder why. Well, I think it's because obviously the idea, the traditional idea of, of households has completely changed because more women work now. Yeah. Whereas in the eighties, way less women worked, so women were more likely to be uh, stay-at-home mums. So therefore, but it's the thing too is whenever you have this conversation, with people who are stay-at-home parents, you know, the stay the stay-at-home parenting rule should be during the work hours. You know, if, if one parent goes to work and the other parent stays at home and it's say the one parent that works is nine to five and then they come home, well, from five till bedtime is shared parenting. It shouldn't still remain the parent, the stay at home parent's job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, big time. Whereas I think a lot, there are many households where the person who works then comes back at five and they're like, well, you know, I, I'm knackered for my day at work. Can you do bedtime or... Where's my dinner? Where's my dinner? Or, or even just like, oh like birthday presents that he bought for other people oh that's your job because it's the household stuff it's like yeah, but it's not all that person's job do you know what I mean no no it's to- toxic masculinity as well it's mm. a big factor do you know when like with our our dads and Aye. that generation like you rarely see older people older men push prams hmm why would they be pushing a pram unless their wife's on it? But you know what I mean? It'd be weird if they're like, <laughs> why, is, why is like a 60 year old man pushing a pram? Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? You would never, I, I, didn't, I couldn't ever picture like my dad pushing us in a pram whenever we were younger. No. I'd imagine my mom would have pushed the pram because Nick, what did you do the other day? We were what, leaving Starbucks and it's all push up pram, you wee puff. And you were like, <laughs> that's so funny that people used to think that, that men were just like, like, like emasculated if they pushed a pram. I know. Wasn't it, Bo Burnham said something about, uh, people think I like boys because of the way I walk or something. And it's like, it's so I know. <laughs> weird, but that's what people used to think years ago. It yeah. Was so if you had, a, if you spoke in a certain way or you walked in a certain way, all mm. of a sudden you love so the day. So homophobic, like just yeah. from, you know. <laughs> so silly, it doesn't yeah. make sense. So weird. Um, I, but that's one of my main things, I think, uh, with our kids is like p- to t- really try and have them have a healthy relationship with food. So hard though. It's so hard. so hard when you're obsessed with them. I think as well when there's a stage where they're not sleeping through the night yet and you really want them to and you're worried that they're not going to have enough food in them during the day to like sustain them overnight. So like winter used to like be eating and I, like whenever she was like seven or eight months, say she was like starting to eat salads or whatever. And her mouth would just open a bit and I'd throw a spoon in. Do you know we food in it? Mm. And you're like, but that's mad. You know, but I'm just like trying to get the food in here. Whereas with Rocky, I'm absolutely not as obsessed with that. I'm just like, he'll just eat what he eats and he'll not eat what he doesn't eat. It's fine. Do you remember before Winter was born and you were convinced that she was going to be this strict vegan? I know. And she was like one of the youngest kids on planet Earth to ever have a McDonald's. Yeah, she was about 10 months. Yeah. Well, Rocky was, I think he was about eight months when he was eating McDonald's Probably. happy yeah. But Sucking chips. Sucking chips. <laughs> <laughs> There's the podcast title. Yeah. Sucking chips. Sucking chips. But, uh, sucking chips and sucking diesel. Yeah, I know. but a good thing you can do as well that I read recently, um, just because winter's quite fussy with eating dinners, 
And I was reading up on that and I find that if you read them a story, it's like a quite a healthy thing to do when they're eating their dinner. Then you can just feed them intermittently as they're reading the story because they're then transfixed on this thing instead of what's in front of them, which mm. is their dinner. And they're like, oh, I don't like that or I don't want to eat that. Make the food secondary. Yeah. But then it's about exposure as well. It's like once they go, oh, I don't like that. You're not supposed to go, OK, we'll never put that back in your yeah, plate again. You're supposed to keep reintroducing it yeah. every few weeks. With with kids who are weaning, apparently it can take like up to 15 times of it being mm. on their plate before they'll even put it in their mouth. Yeah. And you're meant to just do that and they keep doing it. Because I don't think any child's biting into like a beetroot going yummy. But they I might eventually. I don't think any adult is either. But even like broccoli and stuff too. It's like I would put them a plate three, four times a week. But I'm like, I'm not eating this going yum yum. I'll clatter it in gravy or red sauce or something or mix Pepper it in with sauce. my mash and then throw it in my mouth. And even then, you're convinced sometimes that the vegetable thing's an absolute scam. Mm. It's all for the farmers. Yeah, it's just a way of keeping the economy going and keeping people in jobs and keeping agriculture and everything else going because but do you know whatever we could be say wrong, obviously the science says this who's doing the science yeah. and how do we believe them the conservative party oh no <laughs> Connor <But> Keys. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but you know what i mean you're like where's that science coming from and you're going like oh a research a, st- a peer-based or whatever you call it research a study was done and you're like i but who did that i could go out now and study something and write it on the internet no 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 do you know what i mean no. it's wikipedia and then you're, oh, it's verified. Verified by who? Who's the one guy at the end of that whole trail of things that we trust? She soon out. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's who it is. Before him, Margaret Thatcher. Okay. <laughs> That's a font of all our information. Um, is there anything you would like to add before? Because we, and this is a relatively short episode this week because we, we do need to finish up. Is there anything I'd like to add? Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your life, to my life, to this conversation? Um... No, things are going well. <laughs> it's like that, they do that like Jerry Springer, last thoughts. Mm. What are your, what are your, what are my last thoughts? What are your last thoughts? Um, Try to keep kids away from tablets. Like paracetamol and stuff? No, oh, right. Okay. She's the oldest joke in the book. I know, but I actually didn't know if you meant that because we were talking about food. Um. It was rude as well. <laughs> my final thoughts are, I've got all my dolls up here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Just reading up on on kids stuff re- recently and them eating food and ways to make it healthy and make it fun and you know get yeah. them involved in the likes of bacon and stuff and you know make wee animals and stuff out of different things like use the peas yeah. as eyes, use the carrots as a nose. You know, Charlie said to me the other day, a snowman, whatever. Your son Charlie said to me the other day, um, because I was like, she doesn't really like about winter, so she doesn't really like having chips. She will eat McDonald's chips though, and he was like, just buy the wee packs in and just put them in the packs and set them on her plate and I was like that's a great idea yeah she probably yeah. will eat them if she thinks it's like a fun way of displaying your food do you know what's a great thing you can do as well it's either favorite movie or tv show buy like a hundred stickers and a fucking in home bargains or whatever Peppa and Peg stick stickers. frozen on a Peppa carrot Peg. yeah Elsa's carrot on the look. pack on the pack do you know what I mean yeah on the box of like saying you're buying fucking whatever mash yeah just stick a picture of Anna and Elsa on it and go oh we're having and frozen broccoli. mash tonight <laughs> 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 that's a great idea yeah um, so there you go that's my final thought aye okay listen thank you very much for listening and watching meet the parents uh, and have a great time in Malta thank you I thought you were talking to the audience no. see as well um, we, we we really need the podcast to grow to keep this sort of fucking train on the tracks uh, if you can share this with your friends if you can tell people about it if you can just tell a work colleague or whatever um, some things that people have been doing that they've been talking to me about is they like to watch the first 10 or 15 minutes on their phone or whatever when they're having their breakfast and then they get in their car and drive to work and listen to the rest but they're almost visualizing uh, because they see what seen, we're wearing yeah. the scene where we are so they can right. visualize the rest of the podcast when they're on their journey so um, feel free to do that but just don't fucking close your eyes when you're driving yes yeah. subscribe and if you get the that. chance yeah thank you very much and peace out see you soon bitch bitch <laughs>